Oh, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Monday's trading session, the 5th of June 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signal to market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now let's get to the, uh, the actual uh, uh, commentary on price action for uh, this week's trading because we certainly have a lot to cover. Uh, first of all, Asian markets overnight, uh, certainly on the negative side, Nikkei down, Hang Seng down, Shanghai down, and that's mainly due to number one, terrorist concerns in the UK. Again, thoughts, prayers, uh, I mean, condolences go out to the victims of these terror attacks, which really, uh, as, uh, as Miss May said, enough is enough. It is getting ridiculous now, and we certainly need to start focusing on our security services. We need to start focusing on our intelligence services, and also we need to say a, a prayer. And, and obviously gratitude as well to the security services for what they've done so far. And we certainly need to equip them so that they're more efficient and uh, they're certainly more successful uh, in order to protect the UK citizen. And again, it's sickening. It's absolutely sickening. I mean, there's no way you can even describe it. It's sickening. It's disgusting. It's abhorrent. I mean, how many words can we use? It's something that's not acceptable. And uh, let's just pray that we can get over it like we have in Manchester and those in Londoners can certainly get over it as well. And really, we're, we're, just, we're one nation, really, and, we, and we'll get over it together, especially given the One Love concert yesterday in Manchester as well. Certainly showed defiance, okay, and uh, showed strength in coming together from all cultures, whether you're black, you're white, you're, you're Asian, um, you're of uh, English, uh, obviously, descent. It, it doesn't matter, okay? Whatever colour, creed, culture, uh, in reality, One Love Manchester was the concept of it was that we were all together. And we're stronger together as always okay now we certainly don't subscribe to mr trump's philosophy uh, of disunity it certainly is unity and, and strength together so let's pray obviously let's pray and let's, let's remain patient and let's remain tolerant and respectful of one another we can uh, we can agree to disagree and that's what we should always do okay we certainly have contrasting views we have the U uk election coming up as well the uncertainty surrounding that we have uh, some that are obviously Labour supporters, Green Party, whether you're Lib Dem, whether you're Tory. Put forth your arguments, OK? And the strongest argument will win. Same with trading. Strongest argument will win, OK? Uh, one party wants to go short, the other individual wants to go long. And then you have those that want to sit on the sidelines because they're unsure. Each one is correct, OK? And if each one manages his, uh, obviously, risk... Uh, uh, tolerance and is uh, has a good risk management, good money management, and certainly will will, will prosper. Okay, because the, the one that even sits on the fence, he may well be successful because the uh, obviously a trade could be a fifty fifty. It could go either way. So it's best to sit on a uh, sit and wait for another tra trade that's obviously eighty twenty, for example. So again, everybody's a winner. Okay, uh, and on one occasion the uh, the trade that went long may may succeed. Next down the trade that went short could succeed. So. Again, it's all about understanding uh, differences, respecting differences, uh, mutual respect, tolerance and, and love for all. And that's the message really that every individual in the UK should be sending out. And I think it's my duty to send that out as well. OK, so in terms of the uh, FTSE 100, we have obviously no terror concerns. That's certainly creating uncertainty. We have the Lady Labour Party resurgence as well now, given the fact that the difference between the Labour Party and the Conservatives is only 4% now. Uh, and it certainly is closing the gap quite drastically. OK, so hung parliament certainly is the uh, the uncertainty factor as well, the wild card, wild card factor. And it certainly seems like Mr Corbyn certainly has a spring in his step at present. OK, so anything could certainly happen, especially given the fact that the uh, that we've had uh, under Mr Theresa May's watch. We've had six years of Theresa May's home secretary and we've had uh, caught in security services, police numbers certainly down. The previous police met, obviously, individual officer. Uh, indicating that um, he was very unhappy with Theresa May, he was very unhappy with the lack of resources that were provided, and, and that may well have contributed to the actual potential attacks, obviously um, going into uh, uh, in the last two or three months that we've witnessed him in London twice and now in Manchester. So again, we need to equip our security services, make them stronger, give them the, all the resources that they need and all the support that they need, whether it be morally, mentally, monetarily, physically, okay, and that certainly needs to be done. Any nation certainly must have a strong security service. Then, obviously, we have the education 
but we need to support as well. We need to support the uh, the actual NHS, make sure they're adequately staffed, enough nurses to uh, deal with these type of emergencies, etc., etc. So there's a lot of factors at play here. Okay, a lot of factors at play. My obviously uh, view is that one 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 should vote for Labour, given the fact that uh, Einstein stated that the um, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. I think we've had the Tory party in for too long now. Complacency has kicked in. Okay, and uh, Mr. Corbyn's uh, concept of uh, obviously taxing the upper five percent that certainly have uh, increased their share of gains in, in proportion to the rest. The the actual uh, the stats uh, I think I read just this morning of uh, the lower to middle income fa families saving almost a hundred pound a month, whilst you have um, oh sorry not a month but just general savings of a hundred quid versus the upper class the upper echelon that has uh, has an average saving of sixty two grand. Now that's a massive contrast, okay? I mean, that's just insanely, insanely, insanely unacceptable. Uh, the average saving of 100 quid versus 62,000, and yet people are complaining that they want to uh, tax the upper 5%. I mean, seriously, you need to put this into uh, proportion and, and put it into context as well. Uh, so given the fact that 95% of uh, the individuals will not be taxed, okay, in silver echelon, that has a, a massive amounts of wealth, okay? I mean, you say to the, to what's the stats? I think economically, you're the upper two or three percent control nine, eight, you ninety percent of the world's resources. That's not fair, okay? Where's the uh, equitable side from that perspective, okay? And that's what leads to obviously social discourse, social uh, obviously disunity, and that's why we're having all this populist, left-wing fanatic extremist, whether it's right or the left, certainly extremes, okay? That's the whole concept: extremism, radicalization. We're seeing. Uh, crazy parties like Mr. Nuttall's UKIP, for example, okay, I mean, it just goes on, Mr. Griffin, Nick Griffin, I mean, we had him for a while before he obviously was uh, was certainly um, neutralised, so again, it's our job really to uh, to vote and, and, and vote for Labour, from my perspective, I'm certainly going to be voting for Labour, you need to make your own mind up, okay, uh, but these are the arguments that I'm putting forth for, for voting Labour, so obviously we have political uncertainty going forward and that's a concern. We have terrorist concerns, again, that certainly is creating uncertainty. And then we have Qatar and we have uh, um, uh, Saudis uh, certainly uh, going separate ways. And obviously you've got Doha and, and certainly uh, creating instability in the Middle East. And that, again, is certainly risk negative. So all those factors together uh, certainly indicate risk aversion. In terms of economic data this morning, we've had European uh, services data. Okay, uh, China cakes in overnight, slightly came in on the stronger side, so thereby helping the Aussie and Kiwi. Uh, in terms of the PMI services, we have uh, for Spain, certainly on the weaker side, Italy on the weaker side. Uh, German DAX certainly came in slightly better than expected, whilst the European uh, PMIs came in more or less in line, and the UK services PMI certainly came in on the weaker side. We've just had US data out as well, uh, non-farm productivity certainly on the weaker side, so that doesn't bode well. Uh, market services, sorry, unit labour costs certainly on the weaker side as well, and therefore that indicates a weaker dollar. So certainly it doesn't bode well from my perspective. Now let's look at the actual technical picture here. Now let's say the German DAX certainly is off offline today. Uh, it's a holiday for the German uh, uh, index. Now in terms of the FTSE 100 and the French CAC, let's bring up the French CAC. See exactly how European markets are trading here. Now I just need to bring up the European indices. Bear with me. Okay, so again we have oil prices as well. Certainly did spike overnight, although they are have reversed now. We did get oil up to 48.5 and it has reversed back down to 47.2 now. So given the uh, potential supply concerns with a Qatar and Saudi divide, uh, certainly is risk negative as well. Okay, so looking at the French CAC, it's certainly flushing, moving lower. Certainly has been under pressure, okay, all morning. Uh, the next potential support now you're going to witness is around the support at uh, 5280. So watch out for support on the French CAC in that region. FTSE 100 is certainly flushing as well. Certainly has closed the support at 7,520. Okay, so again, watch out what happens next. 60-minute chart at the moment. Uh, I was expecting a potential H&S formation. That certainly isn't the case. But for now, you're looking at a lower high. And double top certainly has been put in with the 7,586. Potential double top. Okay, so expanding on a wedge type pattern and certainly isn't a bullish sign from my perspective. Daily chart at the moment, you've broken out the rising contracting wedge pattern. Again, certainly is indicated bearish for the FTSE 100. Certainly looking weak, especially given the uncertainties. You have terrorism concerns, you have uh, political election concerns, you have 
Qatar, Dubai, concerns. So all these factors certainly adding and uh, certainly weighing on the FTSE 100 euro stocks at the moment. Again, we're still flushing. Uh, the ultimate gap fill level certainly is below around the 3560 level. Let's see if we can close that. All eyes on 3560 on the uh, euro stocks. Okay, certainly flushing lower. In terms of the uh, French CAC, yeah, we've covered. Okay, let's just bring up the uh, the euro USD. Euro USD certainly still languishing. Uh, so certainly still holding. Uh, obviously, we've closed that uh, horizontal resistance. And we're certainly holding that. The upper level has been 1.1290, the pivot high, 1.1310. Uh, 1310 certainly was the inverted head and shoulders. Inverted head and shoulders target. So for now, you're certainly looking at resistance and certainly looking for a flush on the euro as well. Okay, I think that's a good summation then for European equities. Uh, all eyes on the FTSE 100. Keep an eye on it. Okay, certainly looking to looking very 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 vulnerable here. And again, like I said, U.S. equities will dictate direction. On that note, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus.